good shit. Yo, what's up? We uh backstage pass. You know how we do it here. We at the uh, what's that? The Arlington Draft House. Draft House, yes. The Arlington I, Draft House. I got my girl who? Frankie French. That's right. DC's finest, right? You from DC? Originally from New York, but I started comedy in DC, so. Um, well, we gonna claim you because you're funny as hell. So. I'll take it. Thank yeah, you. So yeah, much. yeah. Hey, can you hit, can you hit that door right there? Close the door a little bit. Yeah, we raw like that. That's how we do it. Boom. I want to make sure everybody hears everything about you. Oh, that's what's up. Yeah. I love it. Let's so, okay. I, had, I had never seen or heard of you before. No disrespect. No, you know, I'm, I'm just, thinking. you know, I just got back to the DC yeah, area, I'm DMV thinking. area. Um, and he was on the show, but I heard about you. Some people mentioned you and they said, she's funny, she's funny. I was like, all right, well, I get a chance to see her. And you was funny. You was funny. Thank you know what I'm saying? Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Without a doubt. How long you been starting? You know, how long you been doing comedy? I'm in my 10th year. 10th so now, year. October will be 10 years. Now, you know you represent the DMV. You got a lot on your shoulders, girl. You got a lot of people on your show. Dave Chappelle, Wanda Sykes, uh, uh, Wanda Sykes uh, Earthquake, Earthquake, Martin Lawrence. Yep. Fuck me, shit. Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, okay, fuck yeah, that. I'm putting myself yeah. in that lump, too. You know what I'm saying? Woods, Tony. Late ass Tony Woods. He on the show. And goddamn it, it's late as shit, but that's Tony Woods. Um, so, do you feel any pressure, or what do you feel? What did you know about DC comedy before you got here, before you came and started doing comedy? Nothing. I, did, I knew Dave Chappelle was from D.C., you know, but I wasn't even, I was a singer before I started doing comedy. Really? Yeah. Did you sing like like solo? You do solos? I used to sing, I sang with a punk band, I uh -huh. sang with a rock band, I sang with a soul band for a while, so. Okay, okay, so I okay. Singing, I usually had a backup band. But you can sing solo. Yes, I absolutely can sing solo and acapella. No, 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 no I mean solo that we can't hear you. Yeah, just bring it down, bring it down. But I'm bummed, come on, don't do, don't go for that. That's old, but still, that's what we do here. We do old school shit too. I don't give a fuck. Somebody out there laughing their ass off right now. I ain't never heard that shit. <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> so I just, I mean, I, I, my exposure to comedy when I was a kid, you know, I was left home alone all the time. You know what I mean? Like my mom gave birth to me, left me in the hospital. You know what I mean? So I know, fucked up, right? Like, and then she had kids after me. So people were like, don't take it personal. I was like, but she did it to me personally. Right, right, right. So, but but some of those things make great comics. True, very true. So when I was little and I'd be home alone, I would listen to her records. You know, like Richard Pryor, Red Fox, and I would be sitting there like, oh, he said shit. You know what I mean? So I was very enthralled with it, and it was very, really interesting, especially Pryor, to hear those the rich stories from his background mm -hmm. and to find a way to add levity to it. Nice. So I was always very attracted to comedy, but it was never, you know, something that I thought I would do. I, I had pursued music. Just this little, that little conversation you just had, I see your education level's nice. You use levity, you use a couple of other words that I really like that most people don't have no idea to watch me. I have no fucking idea, so <laughs> I got to put some words in the dictionary and shit. <laughs> no, but, but let me ask you, do you feel pressure as a female? No, no, let me ask you, do you think females get a raw deal in, in comedy? Um, I think you get the deal you fight for. Mm. That's what I'm going to say, regardless of your gender. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, when I first started, I was new. Nobody knew who I was. I wasn't very funny. You know, I didn't really know what comedy was about. Mm. And But I saw how, you were able, how people were able to maneuver. They were able to maneuver because they were funny. Mm. So I, I, was, I started going out literally every night for two years. Like, my first, in my second year, for the next two years, I went out every single night. And I did at least four mics every single night. And if wow. I bombed, I got up and found another mic to get on because I never wanted to go home on a bomb. Because mm -hmm. I knew if I did, I probably wouldn't get back up again. Mm -hmm. And so I worked and worked and worked and worked until people started saying I was funny, you know, mm -hmm. and, and giving me recommendations. So my trajectory wasn't probably as difficult as maybe some other people or some other women might feel. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't, I, was, I didn't ask anybody for anything. I wasn't trying to get stuff. I was like, you know what, if I get funny enough, 
people will offer me opportunities. Nice, nice, nice. Do you, uh, is there like a certain path do you think you need to go, go on? Or are you on that path? Like do you say, I need to get into acting, I need to move to LA, or are you fine right now being 10 years in the game here in DC? Is there something that you're, you know what I'm saying, what's your, what you're looking for to do for your path? So the cool thing for me, you know, luckily I have family in New York. Okay. So when I wanted to start going up to New York, I would go up there once a month. I started going once a month. And I have family to stay with, so I didn't have to pay for a spot to, to, to sleep. And then I started going once every other week. And then I started going every weekend. And after a while, my name started ringing out in New York enough to the point where I could get into the clubs there. So I work at the cellar now, too. And um, I've done some TV spots. I've been on Curb Your Enthusiasm. I've worked with Anthony Anderson on House Haunters. I've been on um, Sam J's show, Pause, on HBO. And all of that came through me working in New York. You know, people are like, Frankie, how, how you do that? How you do that? I really didn't do anything special. I just took the initiative. I was working a day job at the time, too. I'd go to work at 7 in the morning. I'd work till like 3, 4 in the afternoon. I'd get on the bus to New York. I do as many spots as I could get in and then take the 3 a.m. bus back to D.C. and go straight to work. Damn. You know what I mean? I did that for probably about a year until I like really worked myself into New York. So, like I said, you get the opportunities you hustle and you work for. But then why did you come to D.C.? Why are you living in D.C.? Here. But why? Why don't you just move to New York where you get all that work I'm at? from New York. I don't want to, I don't, New York is not. But you got a lot of breaks. Have you got any breaks from being here besides being on my podcast? I mean, on uh, 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 backstage, on uh, backstage. Is this the biggest shit you got going on? In it? No. <laughs> no, well, so currently I'm writing a book. Um, okay. We I, all are. Well, I mean, but I, I, I have a lit agent, though. So, oh, okay. yeah, Ooh, it, I'm bad. I got the same lit agent as Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, right. So, okay. Okay. you know what I mean? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> not, I'm not trying to be a dick, but that's the opportunity that I'm focused on and driving towards. Okay. Um, and so in order to do that, I've, I spent a lot, a lot of time on the road. And I have a daughter. Oh, okay. And I spent probably about 80% of my time on the road away. And so I've taken the last, like, nine months and been home with her. Because okay. she's about to graduate high school. You know what I mean? And so she's, like, coming into her womanhood. And she needs her mom. You know what I mean? I want to make sure that she's straight. When she leaves, her head's on right. Her emotions are proper. You know what I mean? And she has everything she needs and all the appropriate accoutrement that goes with getting out of your parents' house. I want her to have those things. So I've been home supporting her, uh, making sure my marriage is tight because I'm also married. Damn, okay. <laughs> shit, shit, no wonder you're here. <laughs> ain't about your career, goddamn. You got a family here. Right, you know, okay. right, exactly. So I've been, you know, holding my household down. And so that's why I haven't really picked up and moved to any other state because my everything is, is based here for them. No, okay. You know? Well, lucky, the good thing now with social media, you can be out of, you know, I. You can be on another state. If you have the audition, you can do self tape right. at home. So, yes, yeah, yeah, you know. I went back to LA a couple of years ago for like two years, and I damn near did three self tapes and one, you know, live. when inside one live. I was like, I don't need to be here. Shit, I can go right back to Atlanta or DC, you know, whatever. So, I, yeah, so it's a whole different program than when I started. Right. When you had to be in LA or right. New York to do your thing, right. you know what I'm saying? So, no, cool. Um, are there are there any places you like to work the most? Like, let's say regionally wise, is there certain are you more like Midwest or South South or you know City Girls? <laughs> my favorite club to work um i would probably say you know many people may not know about it but the dc comedy loft oh, is probably my night. yeah it's probably my favorite club to work and that's because it's it's home you know what i mean the staff is amazing you know what i mean and it just when you walk in it doesn't matter what level you're at if you fuck with them and they fuck with you when you walk in you are a superstar you know what I mean? They treat you proper. They pay you on time. You know what I mean? Like, there's just, it's no BS with it. And what that like, too, it reminded me of old school when I first started comedy. Right. Wooden like floor. Shit look, yeah. like, shit look like it here, y'all. Right. Okay. <laughs> they know. Right. Shit wasn't painted, nothing. You know, shit was fucked up. But it felt like home as a comedy club. And the staff was so cool. I walked out with some uh, with some edibles and shit and some yes. other okay. yeah. freak shit. Yeah. Like $200 yeah. Worth of yeah. That's it. Edibles the last time I was there. You know what I mean? And she's like, no. I'm like, how much? And she's like, no, 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 no. It's just for you. I'm like, dude. Okay. No, right. No, no. I, I can definitely see that. The improv is cool. It's a little more shinier and it's a little more different feel. Like you said, from when I grew up, I grew up in a place called the Comedy Cafe on 14th Street. Okay. Yeah, that was a straight up strip club right above them. Like, you know, oh, it, it was wild. But it, but it was that was that real comedy grind um, that, that I like so much. So yeah. Um, it, name name a female, couple of female comedians that you kind of like can be around here now or big time that you say. I don't want to say you want to be that career like theirs. Me. Come on, just call me up. Are you ready? I'm ready, bro. Okay, I need some water. All right. Um, um, that, that, you know that you that you see 
that you've seen or you saying, you know, I like that. Is there any famous comedians or somebody you know who that could say, wow? So when I was little, my, my grandmother, I said my mom left me, but my grandmother came, got me out of the hospital. She raised me. So when I was little, I watched what she watched. And she loved Lucille Ball. Oh, wow. And so when I was a kid, she was, you know, in my opinion, she was like, you know, bigger than life. And she could do it all. She could act and do improv and, you know, do stand up, do everything. But just generally speaking, I think that my next iteration of female comedian was Whoopi Goldberg. Okay. When I saw her with Robin Williams and, um, oh, thank you. When I saw him with Robin Williams, when I saw her rather with Robin Williams and, uh, oh God, what is his name? I almost said it. Uh, 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 um, you Billy know, Crystal. Billy Crystal. Right. That's uh -huh. it. And she was doing comedy in a way I had never seen a woman do comedy. She was raw. She was dirty. She was clean. She was intelligent. You know what I mean? She was all of, and she was black and, and she shit. Was black. Okay, and she, was black. she was black. She was black. Very black right. with dreads. Right. She looked like my mom. You know, literally. You know, my mom got pulled over by this white cop who was obsessed with Whoopi Goldberg, and he was like, <laughs> "I know who you are," and didn't give her a ticket. No bullshit. So. That's someone else who, right, right. you know, those are the kind of people that I looked up. These pow those powerful women, okay. you know, are ones that I would call. Beautiful. Well, let people know where they can see you at and reach you. Reach you, you know, uh, I got a little fan base. So I want them I want them really to come fuck with you. And, you know, you're cool as hell. That's I think your, your trajectory is going up. And, you know, holler at her now before you can't holler at all. Okay? Well, where can folks reach you? I am going to act funny when I get famous. So, <laughs> so I'm playing. But my name is Frankie French, spelled F-R-A-N-Q-I. Follow me everywhere. I'm getting ready to take my special, my first hour with 800 pound gorilla it's called let me be frank so check for that um and you can yeah just check my instagram and you'll see all the stuff in the things good like i said check her out man she's a black comedian female doing her thizzle and i want y'all to support her you know what I'm saying? all right it's all no it's all love sweetie i'll catch y'all later out nigga you can jack all with everybody i was just sitting like mr prince mr prince <laughs> One, yo, yo, another episode of Pierre's Backstage Pass. You know how we do this thing, man. I got the man. I got the young young gun of D.C., man. Um, he's done my part, my backyard parties before, and he's always rocked it, man. Give it up. He was funny tonight, too. Give it up for Lawrence Owens. So give it up. I, I got time. Boy, boy, let me tell you. You're somebody I could see that's frustrated. What I mean by that is you're so funny that the break hasn't really popped yet. You're so funny that the break hasn't popped yet. Does that ever get to you? You know, how do you feel about that? I mean, it, it does get to me, but one thing I learned about this comedy game is that when it's my time, it's my time. You know, um, because when you put that energy out of frustration, then it catches on to other people and it just turns people off, man. So I stopped making comedy about me and then start being a comedian. Okay. <laughs> No, 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 and I'm glad you said it because I used to tell all young kid comedians, and I had to learn this. It took me a while to learn this. Enjoy the journey, because you're not guaranteed the end, end results. So might as well enjoy something you're guaranteeing, which is the journey. As long as you're on it, have a good time, whatever the places is, because it will come. Or you know what? I'm gonna say it will come, but why not enjoy it until it does come? You get what I'm saying? It makes it makes sense to you because, like I said, it, it can be frustrating. It took me a long time, man, to finally get to that point where. Why I ain't as famous as other people? Why I ain't on the other people? I said, you know what, man? Just have a good time with it and roll with it. This might be your, your situation, and I'm not going to frustrate myself on something I can't control. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so I'm glad you do that. All right, so you from D.C.? You from, yeah, you got to be from the D.C. DMV area. Landover, man. You know that, man. Landover, Maryland. Landover in the building, PG County. You got to gotta separate that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why, them, why them D.C. bombers always talking about, we ain't from the DMV, we from D.C.? You know what I'm saying? What, what's wrong with saying we're a collective, man? Because uh, they're trying to separate them, man. Because they still come over here to get our girls. We just go over there to get their weed. So, fair exchange, ain't never been no robbery. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, one thing is, um, you're one of the favorites at my backyard joint, man. You kill it when you come over there. And I've always, I, I see, and I hear about you doing other situations, um, clubs that you're really funny at. So people say, you know, you're really, you're really funny there. So I do appreciate that, man. Is there, uh, how long? First of all, how long did you start? I don't even know how long you start. Because I left, but I came back. You was on fire. So I don't know what. Twenty years in. Just like that. 20 years? Mm -hmm. Started in 03. 20 years. Yes, sir. Wow, wow, wow. Ladies, if I go over your house and, and you show me that rest in peace, like obituary, my cousin was the biggest drug dealer in D.C. He should have got better security. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.
That's like a lot of y'all making money, but you don't go to the dentist. You got to prioritize certain things, man. You got all this money, but a mouthful. What what made it? What made you want to become a comedian? What made you want to do this? Because I started off from Jonin and seeing Eddie Murphy. I mean, I, I was always I was always funny, you know what I'm saying? And, and I and I couldn't hold a job down. Like I used to get fired from being funny. Like I, I used to be a host at Red Lobster, and I was in the back making the people laugh so much. So the lady came up, was like, can, I, "Can the manager? Can I speak to you? That young man right there, he needs a raise." And the other woman was like, "Yeah, he did a good job. He's back here for about an hour, hour and a half. I ain't supposed to be back there for an hour." hour and a half so I started taking my little fish name tag off and I knew that was it beautiful beautiful um where did you start did you do the green it was green belt around nah, there the nah, green belt was done Tacoma Tacoma station you know what I'm saying uh Skiba was hosting my very first night on stage I got a standing ovation damn it, it, it was uh on a Monday I got a standing ovation and that's what that's why I start off the gate wrong because I thought that I've arrived. I just thought, man, comedy easy. I've been funny my whole life. So the comedy guys got together and said, look, let's teach him a lesson. That following Monday, when I tell y'all bombed so bad right. that the rest of the comedians talked about me. Like, Damn. Coming on stage like, man, I had a set. He was ripping that page up. But y'all see him? <laughs> and I bullshit you not, man. And, um, and when I was leaving, two security guards, they blocked the door. Cause I was gonna leave, cause I ain't understand. I ain't never been, I ain't never failed in being funny, man, ridiculed, man. And they said, nah, you need to hear this. If them two security guards didn't tell me to stay and watch, do I still do comedy? Mm. So that's how I look, cause I don't know if I come back the following Monday, you know what I'm saying, to do it, cause I've always been funny and the first time to not be funny on that degree, mm. but thank them, whoever they are. Security, if y'all see this on PA, cause y'all probably you know me, thank you. Well, I always tell any comic when he first starts out, when you first start, I tell him, Please do three sets, three times before you make a decision if you want to do this or not. Don't let the first one, second one. I don't care. Like you said, I don't care if you rock on the first one. Do two more sets. By the third set, you can feel. Do you feel like doing this or not? You know what I'm saying? Right. Them, yeah. But also, comedians, this is a mistake y'all make. Don't get caught up in thinking that we say something different every night. What he's saying, three sets. He's saying master that one set. Three different places. What he trying to say? Cause you go up there and thinking to try to say some whole new different and wing it, and that's where you gonna go wrong. Cause you either gonna steal somebody's stuff that you heard stayed in the back of your head, you know what I'm saying, and go get confronted on that, or your nerves gonna take over. You just gonna start cussing or go to sex. Either way, it's gonna be bad news, bro. No, no, that, no, that, no, no. That, that's actually real. That's actually real. And I tell young comics too, and I don't know if you got to this point yet. I just recently got to the point is. You got to find yourself. You, you you think you you know you got to really find it. And when I say find yourself, that means you can go on stage and it's not about the material. It's about what you feel. Cause you can talk about whatever the fuck. You just get on stage and talk about the club. What just happened twenty minutes ago right. backstage and right. shit like that. You know some comics. You know just when they start off, they got just a set. You know when we start working on set, which is fine. But when you start feeling knowing who you are. This is a it's just this is a whole different change, man. You can walk in any room. I don't care who's in front of me or who's after me now. I was Dang. worried. I used to be like, damn, this thing about to rock in front of me. It doesn't bother me anymore. It's just I'm gonna take my time in my situation and do what I do. Have you gotten to that point yet? Hey, let me tell you this, man. That's better than the fame that I used to seek. Mm -hmm. There you go. Cause when you you, then people are gonna start booking you for being you. And if you stop focusing, anything you stop focusing on is gonna come to you. Mm -hmm. Success comes to those who are not looking for it. Nice. Man, once once I started, once I started being me, now I can go anywhere. Cause most comedians in a black room or white room, you can you can drop me off in front of a bunch of deaf Puerto Ricans. No disrespect. Damn. You know how Damn, I ain't even Puerto Rican. I gotta be political. But what I'm saying is that and you can take the blinders off me and I'm gonna do me. Mm. That's the best thing that I've learned in this comedy, and that's what helped quell my frustration. Now I'm having fun because I know who I am. There you go. No, no, that's, that's that's real. That's real. What um what goals have you set for yourself uh, in the near future? If you have set some goals that you're trying to obtain, uh, to to get into more uh, comedy clubs, um, also to enlarge my demographic, like to raise my platform. Because just because y'all don't know me, don't mean I'm not known. If I'm sitting on this man being interviewed, I'm known to a degree. But I want the person who tells the person who tells the person who I am. Mm -hmm. So it's not fame per se, it's just a bigger platform because I feel like that me being who I am is needed because so many people can relate to my story and I just want to be able to convey that to people. So that's what I'm looking for, a bigger platform. Now, this is not an arrogant statement. This is just the truth. You know, I want you to tell me the truth. Do you feel like you just might be too funny to work with some people? Do you feel like I might be too funny to work with people? I asked the question, nigga, so I know I feel that way, but I'm going to ask you now. <laughs> I know who I'm asking and why I'm asking, mother. 
There's a couple people I wouldn't ask that question, okay? I've interviewed a lot of people I ain't asked that question, okay? So one more time, and do you feel like maybe there's a reason why some of the shit you ain't, ain't popping? You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Because some people don't want that heat in front of them. Let's be real. Okay, we're going to be real. This is on, on Pierre's Panic Podcast, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? I am. I get sent home. You understand what I'm saying? But uh, uh, I get kicked off tours um, because I am too funny. But here's my thing. Here's the great thing about it. When they do send me home, they all show me love and respect was appreciated. But what it's telling me, it just ain't meant for me to be with them. I got to find a way to branch and just find my own. So I learn how y'all operate to get to y'all degree. Like I watch y'all and take little bits and pieces and do it for myself. But it is frustrating. But it's not saying I'm looking to do it. But I ain't in here trying to like like dumb myself down. Either. Like I ain't trying to take over your show if I open for you. But I'm not gonna stop me from being me either. Cause there's some people who don't know. And when I get off that stage, they will know. How can I get to your, you know, what I'm saying position if I don't play my position? So. But, but do you understand that some people don't want to work that hard? They, they, you know, some comics, some bigger Absolutely. headlines. You know, they got in there and they might have a mediocre act. You know, let's be real. They may famous though. They famous with a mediocre act. That's not my problem. I know, but that's why they didn't want to bring you with them. You know what I'm saying? So if you're a little more what mediocre. I'm, to do. I'm saying in a rhetorical sense. I know right. what to do. But what I'm supposed to do. Because what I can do is I can cut my time down. But it's not about the time if you make an impact. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not about the time. Because when I do your barbecue, I do short time. And at the end of the night, they be like, Pierre, who the fat dude with glasses? They still say that 19 comedians later. Yeah. So my thing is, man, it's about the impact. Now, now if these quote-unquote famous people can't follow me, it, that's not my problem. man. I can't worry about that. Because I'm trying to get there. Right. Shit or get off the pot. That's my grandmother used to say. And I'm not mad at them. I'm not mad at them. I have nothing against y'all. Right. But what I'm saying is, how about this? When, remember back in your day, like when people like you was funny, y'all helped each other. Mm -hmm. Y'all used to say, hey, put Pierre, mm -hmm. put Pierre. Mm -hmm. Today's time, my t they don't do that. Really? They, they don't. So what that means is now now you got this chain on me instead of just, if you, wanna, if you want somebody, get them away from me, let them go. Right. Let's get this dude his to get his ass out the way. I remember Dale said it about Earthquake. He was like, I'm glad he got his shit. Get him out the way. Mm -hmm. Help me mm -hmm. if that's what you want. And you know what? I, it's funny because uh, I help a lot of comedians. I put them in movies. I let them, you know, whatever I can help. Anything I can do to help comics because mm -hmm. a couple things. One is your shine ain't going to take my shine away. To me, I don't feel like that. You know, I don't feel like it's being. No oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're cutting this part. You won't, you won't, you won't, you won't see this part. Anymore. Okay. It's my goddamn show, okay? Nah, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, okay, seven, 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 nine, three, eleven. How about that? Okay, put them in them. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, it, it doesn't hurt me. And I feel like this. And I'm not doing this because this. I mean, but human nature is. You looked out for me down the road. People sometimes look out for you back. Just like we human beings. Like I remember you put me on, man. I got people now who look out for me because I looked out for them, put them in movies or That's little part. They're like. I ain't forgot, dude. You inspired me, P. Or you gave me a chance, man. And I've forgotten. I don't forgot. Like, nigga, I, oh, that's what I did. Like, you were the first one to do this for me. You know what I'm saying? And they reaching out and helping me out. So it just works that way. So to some of you artists out there, man, it ain't about kind of cuff everything. You ain't got to cuff it all. Spread it out, brother. Be, you'd be surprised. what we'll come back. You know what I'm saying? My, my grandmother said is Your grandma do a lot of talking. She do a lot of talking. You know what I'm saying? Because she from Landover like me. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So she, uh, you, you, down, know, you, you, she was down. You know yeah, 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 yeah she, she was down with Rayful. I remember her. Hey, man, she was, man. But added that part, too. Added that part. So, uh... <laughs> I mean, cause nowadays it's so people so petty. I grab my my grandmother DNA and try to pin bodies on her today. Oh, but anyway, so <laughs> what my grandma just say is that the, uh, the seeds you plant is the fruit you eat. Mm -hmm. You planted them seeds for them cats, and now you able to you know what I'm saying to eat from that fruit, right, man. Right, so right. we need more people like you, right. Pierre. That's all I'm saying. So no, 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 we need more people like you, some young hungry tigers. Do you feel? I know. Do you feel? Is it pride or pressure coming from DC with all the history we have of comics? It is only pride or pressure if you allow it to be. Like, I ignore pressure because because I'm so happy that I've changed my energy. So how can it be pressure? I love what I do. So it's pride then to come from here. It is pride. Yeah. Because individually, I, I'm going to say that I'm looking at the camera. Individually, D.C. are the best comedians than anybody. Ooh, Chicago be talking shit, though. Chicago be talking shit, though. Chicago got nice people. I say individually. But the difference is I've seen Chicago put their own on. We don't do that. DC don't do that. Yeah. I said it. Lawrence Owens, yeah. write it down. Yeah. DC don't do that. But collect like individually, y'all can't rock with us, man. Mm -hmm. And y'all know that. Y'all all love and respect us, man. And I appreciate that. But as a collective, 
I've seen, I've been places where people be like, Chicago, New York, you know what I'm saying, Atlanta, right. D.C., nine different groups. Right. But everybody else, D.C. be nine different groups spread out amongst, we got to stop that. That's, that's right. well, we can't get together and say DMV, nigga. I ain't from DMV, I'm from Virginia. I'm from D.C., suck ass nigga. Mo, go ahead, Mo. Oh, nigga, we all together. When I go out there, I say D.C., nigga. I stayed about a year and a half in D.C., and I still represent D.C. My family has some money. We got money. We had to fuck out of D.C. and move to Maryland, okay? We got a house, motherfucker, okay? You know how D.C., back in the late 70s and 80s, nigga, you stayed in D.C. while you ain't had that money. As soon as you got that money, you got that house, you had to fuck out of there. Exactly. And then the white folks came and took, bought up all of D.C. again made it nice again. You white folks are so devilish, motherfuckers. That's what they do. That's what they do. <laughs> but, but, but it's all in a certain... Remember CeeLo, and every now and then, I wonder if the gate was put up to keep crime out or keep our ass in. That's, that's what they do. That's what they do. Now, come on. Now, you say you from Landover? I'm from Landover. Remember Landown Village? The, the murder, course, the, the shootings. Yeah, that's Bracey Road. That's, that's why I was in high school. I moved there in high school years, man. 1500 Bracey Road, Landown Village. What you nigga, know about Lansdowne? Nigga, you, you, you worked at Friendly's, nigga, at the mall. Okay? With that cake and shit, that big ass cake they tried to serve. Motherfucker, ice cream. Orange Julius. Remember Orange Julius? <laughs> Oh and, I, and I can tell you worked at Tom McCann's too, nigga. Hell no, nigga. Hell no. Oh, no. Uh, no. Oh, and this jacket from up against the wall. Oh, y'all it, I, uh, <laughs> nigga. Cavaliers. Okay. Cavaliers up against the wall. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jeans West, nigga. With them jeans West, nigga. Get them. Uh, uh, and I owe you. Oh, oh, no. Damn, I don't remember that. I barely remember that. I owe you, nigga. And got that watch from Chess King. Remember Chess King? Oh, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> Of course I'm a chess king. Nigga, I got you that sweater from there, motherfucker. Shit. They got this whole outfit. Got, he came from the Madness store, shit. The kiosk in the middle of the mall. Yeah, man, from KB and Toys, though. You remember KB and Toys, man? Yeah. yeah, yeah and man. we went to Farrell's to try nigga, to nigga, book nigga. somebody. Okay, mother Farrell's, motherfucker. Old Zare's outfit wearing ass, nigga, okay? <laughs> nigga, Zare's is your store. You remember that shit? <laughs> Old dark drug shoelace wearing Not Dark mother. drug. I remember dark people's drug store. Oh, hell no. Nah. Yeah, <laughs> That's a lot. For those who for DC laughing their ass, well, I know y'all laughing, man. Look, Lawrence, let everybody know where they can catch you at, man, and see you at, bro. Man, I appreciate it. Man, man, follow me on all social media, man. Instagram, Twitter under Owens Ordeal, O W E N S O R D E A L. Owens Ordeal. I also have a podcast by the name Owens Ordeal. And like I say this with everything I do, live, love, laugh, and learn. Big shout out to Pierre, you know, said for including me to his project. I'm looking forward to seeing each and every one of y'all soon in your city. I guarantee you will not be disappointed, man. Y'all check me out. That's real talk, you know. I don't stamp everybody, but I'm gonna stamp this brother right here. He's My legit, man. man. He's very, very funny. Y'all support him, man. I love y'all too, man. We'll see what's up. Out. How you doing, lovely? Did you did you enjoy the show? Yes, I did. Did I ever? I love shout it. Shout out to the show. Yes. Shout Thank out you. To the no, show. shout out to you. It was such a great show. Everyone was wonderful. I can't wait to see what? you again. I'm gonna have to follow you. I'm gonna have to watch your podcast. Okay. Okay. It was great. Thank you. Welcome. Don't do it like that. Don't act shy. Look at that boy. DMV got some lovely ladies. Lord have mercy. Are you from here? Yes. Okay. Did you enjoy the show? I did. Oh. Lots of laughs. Did you? Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You know I'm you, see, you know I'm single. I ain't looking at that ring. There ain't no ring ring. You know and I'm been from Deutschland. Man, I'm about to hook up with her. Hey, yeah. no. Are you really? Yeah. Sure. Man, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Can I get some, uh, did you enjoy the show? Yeah, it was so funny. Perfect. <laughs> Yo, yo, here we are, backstage pass. We at this show here in Arlington, Virginia, at the Arlington Draft House. My man Rob Gordon put it together, y'all. He's an actor, comedian, he's a little bit of everything right here, man. First of all, thank you for bringing me on the show, brother. How'd you come up with that concept of doing this, brother? Uh, man, we were sitting around, man, and I was like, I gotta get back on stage, but I didn't wanna do it through the comedy club, and them booking me and stuff like that. I always uh, kinda produce my own show, so I was like, let me produce, produce something that with the comedians that I love, you know you what I mean? Go. There you go. I, that I rock with, you know, some of my OGs and a funny DC vet. So here we are, you, Tony Woods, Lawrence Owens, mm -hmm. and Frankie French. Um, let me ask you, um, is this something you do every month, every couple of months? It was a nice look. Um, so I started off producing shows. It's not every every month. We're going to probably try to do it every month now um, and move it around. Um, but I started off producing my own shows. Like, we would have martini stuff here, but I wanted to travel. So what I did was I would book a venue in a specific city, Pay them whatever the fee was, produce my produce my show. Then I got 
in that city. I had different comedians. I would connect with comedians in that city. Then they would bring me to that city. So that's kind of how I integrated myself into comedy. And I did that from New York to Philly to Atlanta, all the way to the West Coast. So that's kind of my kinda nice, my nice, nice. So I know it's gonna be crazy. I know people maybe asked you this before. What do you like more, comedy or acting? Ah, it's split. It's a split decision, but uh, comedy for sure. I got my I got my chops in comedy first. Um, I will always be a comedian. When people are like, you're an actor, I'm like, I'm a comedian first. Mm. Um, because comedy kind of gave me that catapult in order to be able to jump into the movies and TV shows and series and stuff like that. And it also keeps me sharp, you know what I mean? Because we do act outs. We do this, we do that. Your comedic timing has to be there. So even in acting, serious acting, you still got to have timing. Mm -hmm. So um, comedy first and then acting for sure. yeah because people ask me the same thing and i just say i'm, I'm like i say comedy um you know because it's instantaneous i come up with the lines and stuff you know what i'm saying no one tell me what to say or whatever the case may be right and it's um it's instantaneous you know once you do it you can see the love right there with movies you gotta wait for it to be edited and all that kind of stuff you have no control of the editing and all that that's real that's real that's real uh, um um let me think uh you from DC? From DC, from Southeast DC, by way of Northeast DC. I went to school uptown. Shouts out to Archbishop Carroll. Shouts out to. Oh, here, 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 here. Collegiate, what do you call it? Catholic boy. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Played football up there. Did uh, you really? Mm -hmm. Went on to, to, to Hampton University, played football down there. So, yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. What thing about Carroll, if I remember Carroll, you kicked the field goal, you put that motherfucker on the street. You remember that? He put it in the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You kicked the field goal, put it, it's definitely going on the street. Yeah, yeah. When I was young, and I used to remember that. I used to go to games with DeMatha and all them yeah. joints and Carroll and all that. Yeah. Yeah, man, good, good shit, good shit. Who came out of Carroll? Anybody come out of Carroll we know? Man, yeah, it's a lot. It's uh, Ronnie McLeod. Um, he, he in the NBA right now. Shouts out to Ronnie. That was my basketball teammate. Um, uh, it's so many, it's so many great players. I'm saying just recent players. You got Ronnie McLeod. You got um, Chris Joseph. Chris Joseph played at Syracuse, and then he went on to the NBA for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Football-wise, um, it's been it's been a couple years other than myself. It's been no, I'm just playing. Um, uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but it's been a couple years. But we got a, a young kid named Nick Harbor. Um, Nick Harbor is the number one uh, recruit in the country right now. Um, kid mm -hmm. is is super super dope. Um, he's six seven. Mm -hmm. he's kid number one in the country. So yeah, I mean you know Carol, we we won a lot. Uh, there is, no, 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 no. One, one thing about DC, I love D we hustlers. DC got to, DC. You know we we hustlers. We we do what we do. We do other things. We try to make stuff happen all the time. We don't be waiting for nobody. You know from the people I know that I came up with DC folks. You know we just hustle, get our own grind on. Is that one of the reasons? Did you like not work at enough comedy clubs? And you said I'm gonna do my own thing. How did this come about? Why you know you're doing your own situation? Nah, I, I, I worked at comedy clubs. I, I toured with B. Simone. Um, I, I toured with Russell Peters. Um, nice. I've toured with uh, uh, um, um, uh, Tony Robbins, Billy Sorrells. I mean, I, I, I was doing that, but you know what I mean? Before I had got to that point, let me say, this is kind of me going back to my, my roots. Like, mm -hmm. before I had got to that point, I was doing my own shows. You know what I mean? Like, because I was young. I was like four or five years in the game, but I wanted to get on the road. And four or five years in the game, other than Lawrence, Lawrence took me on the road. Lawrence Owens took, shouts out to Lawrence, mm -hmm. shouts out to Tony. They took me on the road, but if I wasn't on the road with them, I couldn't go on the road. Because mm -hmm. at five years, don't nobody know you. You know what I mean? You got to build your name up. This was pre-social media. I came in in a weird era. It was like pre-social media. Mm -hmm. Like, we were still like Facebook was around, you know what I mean? Um, stuff like that. So, you know, it was just a weird situation. So I started producing. And so th from there, that's how I kind of got my legs and started to learn different people in different cities. And then I just kept it with me. So then I went on the road, and now I'm coming back to producing shows. Nice, okay. nice. I asked a couple of comics about this. Do you feel any pressure? Is it pressure and pride or just pressure or pride coming from D.C. with the lineage of comedians that we have? How do you feel? Do you feel the pressure of it or just, just pride about it? Both. I think it's definitely pressure, you know what I mean? coming from it's like it's like coming from a family if your dad michael jordan you know what i'm saying that's a lot of pressure bro we got dave chappelle martin lawrence you red grant tommy davidson uh louis ck uh 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 louis black bro that's that list is so long bro like it don't matter where you were at in the country when you say you from dc they looking like okay all right well let's see you know what I mean? Because it's like, okay, you from D.C.? Well, let's see. Let me let me see that you from D.C. Because it's not just a city that you could be like, oh, I was raised in the comedy scene in D.C. They're going to be like, well, who you know? Mm -hmm. Who you know? You know Tony Woods? Mm -hmm. Do Pierre know you? Mm -hmm. Do Tony know you? Mm -hmm. do, 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 do Lawrence? You know what I mean? So it's kind of one of those cities. So you do feel the pressure. 
but you also feel the 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 excellence as well. Like you can't right. come out of here and just be half stepping. Like mm -hmm. when you step on stage, or when I step on stage, I represent the city. Mm -hmm. I represent all of y'all. I represent everybody that came before me. So um, it's it's both. Mm -hmm. We have both. Well, well and I'm I'm surprised. I'm not saying one is we have such a multicultural. When I was coming up, white people, black people, Asians in the audience. When I was coming up, but I've noticed some other cities, like I'll say New York or whatever, New York or some south down south, yeah, like they seem to be too much down south comedy wise. And we seem like we're more of collective, and we can go around the you know around the world doing this, man. Do you feel this? And then some guys, unfortunately, DC comedians, they still DC comedians on. You know what I mean? They ain't spread their wings big enough. You know what I'm saying? I think the reason we spread our wings is because we the audience that we came up with have whites, blacks, yeah. you know, everything. In for sure I think um, Like what you said I think D.C. is a well diverse Type of place You know what I mean It's You grow up In a city well, When I say grow up I mean in the comedy game We in front of crowds That are white Black Asian You know when you perform At the improvs And stuff like that Like these crowds are diverse So your material Has to be diverse It can't be localized material One thing that Lawrence Owens told me, I, I never forget, he was like, stop writing local jokes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what you mean? Like, it's funny. He's like, it's funny here. But when we go on the road, it's not funny there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's kind of like we're forced here as comics coming up under y'all. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, because y'all had a great era. So we come up under y'all. Y'all going to push it. Like, we have conversations. Y'all push us a certain thing. Like, don't write that. Write it clean. Do this. Do that. And so for, for me, coming from D.C., um, we have to be diverse, you know what I mean? Because it's not, we don't have a the 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 pleasure of walking on stage and just seeing a straight black audience mm -hmm. from the west side or, or the south side or whatever. Like you walk on stage, you walking on stage in front of white professionals or a lawyer or a doctor, and you have to be able to relate. That's right. And if you can't relate, they are gonna look at you crazy, boo you off. You know, you know how DC is. They are gonna boo you off. like so, or just be quiet. Like the right. worst thing as a right. comedy you can right. get is just silence. Right. So. Right. Um, sometimes, depending on right, if you're right. in that pocket or not. Right, they might be listening to you, though. Yeah, but yeah. you know when D.C. niggas don't like you, they nah, get that yeah, real right. sign. You get the grit, you get the signs and the gritting. Nah, that ain't it. You know, that ain't it, that ain't it my man. Run that one back, you know? You know what I mean? So, you know, I think, you know, with us, man, you, you have to be diverse. You have to, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's no choice. We don't have an option. Well, I've seen you a couple of times, man. You're funny, bro. I, I I can see it happening for you. I'm happy to be around this air. Come came back home to watch these young cats like yourself to give back. Also, even though, though you ain't at that next level, you still giving back. Sure. You get what I'm saying? I know some people on the higher level ain't giving shit back. You know what I'm saying? So the brother like you who are on his way up, still looking back to help folks out is really dope as hell, man. So um, I see nothing but great things in front of you. Let people know where they can see you and follow you at, man. Y'all can follow me on my social media. It's Rob Gordon. I got a special out on Amazon called Problem. Go ahead, tap in, watch that. Got a couple movies dropping. I got a TV show called Hush on All Black. Okay. I got a movie called Million to One coming to theaters near you. Um, I got a movie called Christmas Lottery. I got another movie called uh, Yeah, uh, a Christmas Heartbreak. Um, yeah, we working, brother. Uh, without a doubt. Without and, and you doing it from here or from LA? I'm in both. I'm in both places. Uh, I, my home is now in Los Angeles, California, but I'm I'm still here in DC. So my son is here, and I'm back and forth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, yo, support this brother, man, for real, man. Rob Gordon, support the brother, man. Um, and uh, we'll see more from you, brother. Okay, man. I appreciate you giving me some time, man. Same here, brother. Yo, you know we do his backstage pass. You know how we do it, right? Always let y'all know what happens backstage. This is no different. Out. Like so, boom. This this hot. As a matter of fact, this month is my anniversary in comedy. The third Thursday in May. This not the clapping part. Listen. <laughs> Some people don't know their cues. <laughs> I appreciate it. we got my man Tony Woods in the place to be, man. Hey, happy birthday, Go, go, P. The legend, the DC legend. How you feel about, about being called a legend, man? I do not like it. But listen, oh, it's all good. You don't like it. What you mean you don't like it? Because he started before me. He was just in high school. But we, right, but right, yeah, right. but. You used to be a dentist assistant. Remember that? I was an oral maxillofacial surgical assistant. Okay. You were the first one told me that the, the, the uh, what do you call that? So what do they put in the, the chlorine, chlorine, or whatever, what do they put in? Chlorine. It's so small in toothpaste. You say it ain't worse than this shit. You're the first one. Toothpaste is just cologne. Right, right. What what matters is the is the technique that you use, bass and vertical. Just you got to get the shit. It don't it don't matter about the detergent. It matters about your scrubbing technique, how you clean your dishes. You can't just use uh, Dawn right, right. and not scrub the junk. Right, right. But man, I know this guy is him and man, Martin Hunt's first yeah, yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh it's about you. God. It's about you right now. So being a legend, <laughs> I know. 
How you feel, man? You still doing comedy, man? After all, how long you been doing this thing? Since I met you. So 35 years ago. Ah, Chicky Pow Wow. No. As a matter of fact, this month is my. Th- uh, wait, I don't know what. It's but third, third. 87. I, I saw 85. I started 86. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. I almost started 83, but right. I saw Kevin Lee, and Kevin Lee was so funny. Cause he dropped the bowling ball. I never seen a juggler drop something. Damn. Hell, Ke- shout out to Kevin Lee. I was with him right. yesterday, right. man. Right. Yeah. But back to you. You've been, man. You've been all over. I know it's one thing. You the only comic I know love overseas more than the United States. You ain't shit. I wonder why. Because the improv and the motherfucking funny bone don't book me, motherfucker. <laughs> okay, yeah. Right. Listen. I, now Pete know, and he want me to say this. Right. I'm too black right. for the white comedy circuit, and I'm too white. For the black comedy circuit. Damn, you kind of caught in between. But you just right for them four lines. Tony Woods. Whenever I go overseas, <laughs> whenever I go overseas, you don't know Tony Woods. Do you know Tony Woods? What the fuck? No other comedian. There's a thousand of comics go overseas, but every time I go over there, it's, you know Tony Woods? And I took him on his first trip, went to Germany, uh, and it went uh, Amsterdam. Uh, 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 you know, I've been all over Asia and uh, the United Arab Emirates and. Uh, Seychelles, Africa. It's 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 a group of islands. It's a group of islands off the coast of Africa. Are people walking out? It's above. It's above Madagascar. What's up, man? It's above Madagascar and all that stuff. And you ever get caught up in some bullshit? No, not yet. I, oh, I got caught up in some bullshit because I saw something that don't too many people see. And I saw it. And when the people, the local people, said, "Don't talk about what you saw," and I went on. I was on another podcast. I didn't mean to cheat on you. I was on Joe Rogan's podcast. You're supposed to. I was on Joe Rogan's podcast, and I and I mentioned it. And like, there's some people like serious oceanographers have been reaching out to me. Yeah, some real because I. Well, you said it once before, and we'll say here. What what you see? I saw a merman. A merman. Yeah, it wasn't like the books. It wasn't like the movies right. with the little sexy girl with the titties right. singing like, oh, no, no, see, no. Right. <laughs> this motherfucker was like a dude on 8th Street, 8th and H in the 80s, like, hey, man, get your punk ass off this block. <laughs> like that. Like, you sure you you sure you sure weren't smoking a little something, something? Well, no, you can't take drugs over there, but <laughs> but it was open bar. <laughs> but I said, this is the real thing. It was me. It was an old group of us, but the only people who saw it was me and a little French boy who was like 10 or 12 years old. He was autistic. He was nonverbal. Okay. That merman brought the, brought the voice out of that motherfucker. Uh-huh. He was talking. But listen, the only two people saw it was the crazy, drunk black man from America and uh, one autistic boy who ain't spoke in eight years. Fuck! Mm-hmm. Like, that's what everybody said. Mm-hmm. Michael Ben Pierre. Now, now, let me ask you. You've traveled all over the world, so let's talk about overseas. What's some of your favorite places to perform? I know Amsterdam. The Netherlands. Netherlands. That's how you said the Netherlands. Netherlands. Yeah, me and him went over there together. The Netherlands. And, and of course, Australia. Australia is always good because uh, they are super racist, too. But, oh, shit. No, they're super racist. Really? But the good thing about Australia, everybody can't be white. Like, in Australia, right. like, people from... Italy, people from uh, Spain, mm-hmm. they're not considered white people. Mm-hmm. Over here, everybody can be white. Shit, Dominicans can be white mm-hmm. over here, but boom. Damn, damn. I you, didn't know that. You, you could be. Anyway, listen. <laughs> what some of the people don't know, hold on, some of the people didn't know is this. I got to give him a, a lot of, a, a thank you, a huge thank you. I went to South Africa four times. The first time was because he was too tired because he came back from Australia and was like, I don't want to go over there. You want to go? I said, Fuck, I'll go. I don't give a damn. And I went there four times and had some of the greatest experience of my whole life. So thank you, Mr. Woody, that you hey, was hey, so the, busy and so tired I coming was, back. That particular year, man, I had, I had seen my, my sons uh, a total of a week. But Damn. in different part, but not one week. Right, right. Seven, I, eight, two days. Yes, because because yeah, cause we we did the we did the the um the Norwegian Comedy Festival, we did um the Edinburgh Festival, we did uh the uh we, we did Kilkenny in in Ireland, we did some stuff in in England, we did uh, Australia in Australia. You got to do the Perth, the Sydney, mm-hmm. the Melbourne. The Queensland Festival and the uh, 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 Adelaide Festival, and then boom, we did some other shit in uh, in um, New Zealand. Right. And New Zealand is like Twix, cause you think it's one candy bar, but you open it up it's two. So Damn. New Zealand is two Damn. places. And then we done some shit in in China, Japan, boom. And so I was like, and they said, 
come down to South Africa. But but haters gonna be haters because the white dudes is like, Mike, you don't want to go to South Africa. It's very right side. I'm like, y'all motherfuckers right side. <laughs> but I didn't go, and I said, who need to go and get down? My money. Man, I appreciate. It. I had a good, I had a great time. So you spent. Oh, speaking of racism, have you run into any foul shit overseas before? I know, but I'm like, I'm like Obama. I can just, I can, you know, like they think. They call you a nigga on stage? From, from stage, nigger? As a matter of fact, I'm so clever. Uh -oh. I, like, I, I, I do this thing where I say Virgos. And they go, hey, you're a funny Virgo. So they use my shit against me. But boom. But I'm like, I empowered you. But what make you think you can snatch the pebble out of my hand? Ah, shikity bow wow. Do you, you was at my show, bitch. I wasn't at yours. Nah, 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 nah. Shikity aggity. Oh, let me, but let me ask you, do you still really, really, truly enjoy comedy and, or the traveling, getting party? Well, what, what part is getting on your nerves, man? You've been doing a long time. Something has to get to be under your skin, but the rest of it, do you still like to get on stage or you don't like to do small yeah. time or what? Are you traveling? What, 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 what's working for you? What's not working for you? Yeah, I'm going to tell you the honest truth. The best part of the day is this stage time. But to get in it, like today, I was in upstate New York. I was in Poughkeepsie, New York, and had to come back to New York City, catch a train, then come down here and then rest. But before you got to come home, I got to hear the politics of what's going on in the house. And I'm like, yo, I got a show at 7. Tell my family, wake me up. And they go, sure, you got a show. You just want to go hang out. Because <laughs> they don't look at my, they don't look at this as, yeah. Remember back in the day, Greg Poole had a, had a, uh, a joke. He goes, uh, he would say, uh, he goes, Daddy, don't leave. Daddy, don't leave. He said, hey, man, I got to go do this. I got to go do that. Oh, Daddy, see, when I said, well, you guys want PlayStation, you want this, you want that. He go, I got to go now. To pay. He said, oh, that's what we're saying, man. Get in on it. Go. <laughs> like that. So, boom. Yeah. Um, um, what, is, what is one of your biggest highs in your career, you have such a legendary career. Is it the time to shout out from Dave? I know that's a little great thing. What is what is some of the biggest highs you've had in your career, man? Because you've had a lot of stuff, and some people don't really know you that well. I feel like you're still untapped. They call you legend, which you are. People love you in DC, the DMV area. But I was wondering, what is it? And I, and, and, I, and I can tell you, I think, like, okay, we did the Oddballs of Comedy Tour. Who was that? Who was on that? Uh, it was Dave Chappelle. It was uh, it was Dave Chappelle. Uh, Flight of the Concord. Uh, Michael Che. Uh, 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 was Hannibal Burrs. Uh, uh, rest in peace. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Mike Brody. Uh, 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 oh, Mike Brody. And the guy from the the uh, Whitney Show. What's his name? Black guy? He, no, he's white guy. He was her boyfriend. On oh, the, I, I, I didn't watch Cummins. it. I know Whitney Cummings, but I didn't watch the show. Okay, whatever the guy's name. Him and Jeff Ross. Oh, Chris Tucker was on it too. What? It was like 20,000 people. And so, boom, the guy from the Whitney Cummings show did too much time. And they kept saying, yo, your time's been cut down from 10 minutes. Now it's going to 7 minutes. And they said, you probably got to do 4 minutes. And Jeff four. Ross, when I did, said, he good. What's that mean? He said, he's like, he's good. That's what Jeff Ross told the people. He said, he's good. He says, but they said, but don't. Cut into Chris Tucker's time. I'm like, I'm not going. And then the guy, what's his name? With the guy from Whitney Cummings show, he came off. We go, hey man, they were great. They were just feeling me right now. I'm like, Ooh. I'm like, no, but I'm like, hey man, relax, do your thing, dog. And I went out there, and it was at uh, what's the name? What's the name of the place? Uh, 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 and, and it's the computer people, Apple people. Uh, 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 Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. So boom. Son, who you got paid for that show? Ooh, I had seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes? It was seven minutes like it was like uh, it was like Ali when Richard Pryde tell a joke about Ali and uh, he said, "Bam, I got to have it tonight, Shorty." And it's seven minutes like <sighs> stand ovation, twenty twenty thousand people, wow. boom boom. You can see it on the monitors. People going, <laughs> and I was like, "Hey man, I I'm the only one on the show without a show." I got to go. <laughs> and they was like, no! Nah! It was like an upheaval. Right. So, boom, the next show we did in Vegas, they wouldn't let me on because they said, well, you got to go on before the flight of Concord. The flight of Concord. So, we don't want that smoke. They anyway. Like three or four people. That, that's a, that was like a group of people. It's, right? two, it's just two of them. Oh, just two, two of them. People. Okay. okay. Anyway, well, well, let me ask you. Wait, wait, wait. Another thing, we was in Australia. 
and we was that's when I realized I needed glasses. We went we went to this, this club called Tattlers, and it was a body paint party. Okay. Right, but it was dark and it was hip, it was slick. We in there, I'm talking to this badass girl. Ooh, ooh, Jiminy Crickets. And she got a tuxedo on. And she's like, you're American. I'm like, yeah. So we we kicking it, P. We kicking it. There's people walking around with free champagne and wine. Boom. It's me, her, and, and, and Rain Pry, Richard Pry's daughter. Mm -hmm. Boom. We in there. We're kicking it. We're having a good time. And I'm talking to this girl with a tuxedo on. Okay. Nice. Tuxedo. What? Wait, what? That's what I'm saying. A that's tight one. A okay. tight tuxedo. A tight okay. tuxedo. Okay. Remember I said in the beginning, it was a tet, it was uh, it was a body paint party. Guess who didn't know? You. There you go. You ain't trying to pull a tuxedo, did you? No, 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 oh. no. But that's when I was like, I don't need glasses. <laughs> so, so, dude, I went to the bathroom, like with the, the men's room, and the guy goes, "It's for everyone." Like that, boom. You go in the bathroom, boom. It was wide open. Everybody in there doing what they want to do. It was a lot of, uh, I guess, baby powder on the counters. Wow. 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 No, no. Baby powder. Baby powder. <laughs> baby powder. Okay. A lot, of baby, a lot of people got smell differently too. Could have been cornstarch. I don't know, <laughs> but it was all over the place. I'm like, wow. People just, I mean, people just open and the lights was bright. I'm like, these people are naked. <laughs> like right there, I'm like, <gasps> like I'm like these motherfuckers ain't got no clothes. They naked, and I'm looking at everybody naked. Everybody doing woo, chick. and then boom, I come back out, and this girl had been saying that I wasn't like regular Americans because Americans are loud and over the top and blah 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 blah. And every time somebody would come up and say something to her, I would go, hey man, and we talking. And she's like, she's like she loved me for that, but I'm like, and then I come back I'm like, ah. She butt ass naked. She had a she had a tattoo body paint joint on. That, that monkey. Head just she had, you couldn't tell that was a damn one. No, no, no. That's when I said I got to go see Aptamatures. <laughs> <laughs> and so boom, I come back. Now I'm not cool no more. I'm like, so what you doing after this? What you, want, you should go do something like God. Before that, I was asking her about what she was studying in university and shit. After she was butt naked, dude, her coochie head was sticking out like a terrorist beard. Really, nigga? <laughs> yeah, like that's a terrorist. I'm from the 70s. Okay, I, I ain't mad at you. <laughs> I ain't mad at you. I ain't. Oh, but no, but anyway, P, look, P. And so, and then a uh, rain prior, I said to her that night, she says, Me and my dad were watching. Me and my dad were watching. Uh, hold, hold, hold on. What's up, bro? My name is Sky Edwards. I'm not trying to intrude. Well, yeah, okay, but you intrude. We in the middle. We we doing the thing right now. Hold up, hold up. Give us a I second. second. We're taping. We're taping. Yeah. Give us a second. Come on, y'all close it because I can't hear that music because I won't be able to use this shit. That motherfucker crazy. Yeah. That's all good. That Wait. motherfucker. No, no. So hold on. I'm, I'm, I know. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that motherfucker crazy. Wild wow, boy. But I, I, let, me, let me wrap it up with something real quick. I got to accept some more shots. So here, the, I was there when um, Dave Chappelle gave the shout out when he won, won the award. The, uh, what, yeah, what the award? Mark Twain. Award. Mark Twain award. What did that do? For, did it do anything for your career? Do anything for you? Like what? How did that help you, motivate you, or what? Did it do something? I love how this motherfucker talks to me like he don't know me. Because <laughs> he laughs at... Like I just said, I didn't know it was a body paint party. He's like, motherfucker, only you would know. Yeah. I've like, known you long enough. Yeah, he know. If we had been there together, he'd have been like, whoa, you got to try the fruit. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, what are you talking about, P? Like, ah, it's a, everybody naked, motherfucker. For real? And that's that's what happened at the thing. So I don't know if you saw the, the thing, because there was three empty seats. And so I sat there, and the guy said, you got to move. I, I didn't know what was going on. So I sat next to that girl, and she's like, and I moved over. I'm like, and then they, and then the guys came over and said, "No, you got to sit next to her." And she's like, "Hey, oh, are you doing a body paint? We talking about Chappelle? What are you, what are you doing? We're going back. We're going back. Stop the body. We got to that point. Chappelle. I know. So let's start. What did it do for your career? What are you talking about? You talking about somebody, lady sitting next to you? Know? First, you supposed to be like a professional interviewer. Uh, fuck, I ain't damn that, nigga. It's you, nigga. This is backstage. This is backstage path. You was on uh, some Harold uh, Rivera shit right there. You getting personal. Uh, Listen. Uh, so I'm saying that the girl at Mark Twain, okay. and then it said, Tony Woods, he said that. Right. And it was like when, when your flight been delayed. Right. And like, and you at the magazine store, and they go, they go, Pierre Edwards, uh, report to Gate 12. You go, this shit, oh, my yeah. name? Right. <laughs> like, you don't even know who this motherfucker bitch is. Yeah. And that's what happened. And then that bitch is like, 
Lean on me. Ooh. Yes. And then, if you look at it, it look. It look I'm gonna watch it. We gonna rewatch that. Came together. It look. I don't know this bitch. I thought that was your girl. <laughs> She was up on your show. She was damn near on your show. I know. That bitch, yeah. I thought you give your lap dance right in there. Man, don't be. He making it dirty, man. Yeah. Listen. And then, and then, but Rain Pride said that night. I said, you don't know me. I'm Tony. She said, fool, don't play with me. Come on. Everybody know Tony. She Wayne. said, she said, me and my dad, who was Richard Pryor, wow, right. were watching. She said, they just put that shit on for him. He said, he don't watch it. Right. And then he said, he saw me and said, turn the volume up. And he, and he said to somebody, he said, yeah, he gets it. And she said, she thought, he, he was horrible. <laughs> like but, but Richard Price said, yeah, he gets it. It was the one I did in New Orleans where I went too long. And it's like, you over time, like, I'm the last one. Right, right. Yeah. That's what Richard Price would do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, some yeah. some PA will do. Oh, no, so so you a le- birthday Cardine. I always call him Cardine. Uh, no, nah, I appreciate Cardine that. Ain't no Sardine. He would. He, yeah, he would say that still. Old school man. I mean, look, everyone loves you. You a legitimate legend, man. Um, you know, you know, your name should be up there with with some of the greats. I hope they. I hope it does, man. On my wallet. On my driver's license. Pass that, man. No, and you know, uh, for real. I don't know who else is more. What, what was it, revered or never not revered? Revered positive, right? You know, yeah, likes you. Then you, Tony, and I'm dead ass. I mean, there's other comics around the country. I can say whatever, but whenever your name come up, Bronx Tale. Of course, I remember that. Uh, would you rather be respected? Rather be loved or feared? And well, so fear make way more money than me. Okay, okay. I'm sure just love. No, nigga, you you reason you don't make a lot of money is because you late all the time. You late this show and shit. That's what it is. That's you late on this fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your podcast. Yes, I, I believe that. I believe that. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. And so yeah. 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 So now we now we love it, brother. I appreciate you coming through. Where can they where can they hit you up at, man? Where my folks can hit you up at? I don't like people following me. No, okay, wait. What's Instagrams? I'm Tony Woods with a Z on Instagram. And then my Facebook for people over 50 is just a newspaper. I don't give a fuck. I ain't promoting no shows. I just want to see who got married, who's sick, who mama died. I don't give, you know what I'm saying? For real. That's No, over 50, that shit is our newspaper. And uh, Instagram is like mm, to advertise, and I don't even fuck with tit- titters. Whatever, man. But we love you, brother. I'm so I'm so proud of knowing you for these all these years, man. Yes, man. I appreciate that. So that means Keep doing that. You, Come on, uh, uh, right? Yeah, exactly. Go support this brother when you see him uh, live. Anywhere you see him at, he's a month hilarious. Stay at the he DC just killed. Improv. Yeah, but this I don't know when it's coming out, man. This so month, this month, yeah, 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 yeah. This might be coming out next year, nigga. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Damn. Nah. No. <laughs> all right, y'all. Tony Woods, the legends here, man. We holler at you later. Backstage pass. It is what it is. Yeah, out, bro. Boom, Room, the panic room. Like this. And we're here.